today, we are not here to deep dive into Pathmark. We're much rather here to meet Adam Bird, um, who is heading up um, Chronify, a very interesting company that we have the pleasure today to, to speak with and learn much more about. Um, Adam is the um, CEO and co-founder of Chronify, and he will tell us um, what a company does, how they're growing, and also a little bit about himself. So Adam, welcome to the show. Hi, Lucas. Very good. So maybe tell us about Chronify at the very beginning. What is it all about? Chronify is scheduling infrastructure. In the same way you use Stripe for payments, you use Chronify for scheduling. So we help companies like Indeed, like Hired, like GoDaddy, who need to embed scheduling into their applications, be that, say, online booking uh, for a, a GoDaddy user, for an interview scheduling for Indeed or Hired and, and hundreds of other co companies. Mm -hmm solve all of the kind of complexity and security and privacy issues with connecting into people's calendars and then expose a series of capabilities to allow them to offer uh, real-time scheduling links to candidates, customers, uh, other people they're interacting with. Got you. I see. So that sounds more like enterprise businesses that are using the platform. Is, am I correct? Um, our main customers are actually other SaaS vendors. So we're the kind of this technology that they would bake in. So customers of our customers are often enterprises themselves. And that's part of what Conify has to solve is you know, by being ISO 27001, by being SOC 2, understanding GDPR and HIPAA is actually we can be a custodian of that very sensitive calendar data. Mm -hmm. While I still allow the SaaS vendor to leverage that in order to deliver the functionality that the recruitment team need or the, uh, the scheduling team need. Gotcha. I was actually about to ask you who would be the types of businesses and the types of people that would be you know, picking up Chronify and using it. So the, the obvious one are developers. So they have a sort of clear thing. I, I need to deliver something that solves scheduling. I need to allow people to manage their working hours. I need to allow people to visualize. Mm -hmm. But I guess our, our key market uh, that we focus on is product managers. So I, I'm an ex-developer myself, a CTO and co-founder of my last company, which I exited in 2013. So I have been building and commercializing APIs since 2002, mm -hmm. since before they, way before they were cool. And so we've actually built a solution for developers in a way that we're absolutely confident that for, when the technical evaluation stage of the sales process happens, that's no problem. The key is getting under the skin of the product managers and identifying their needs, what they're, they're trying to, what benefits they're trying to deliver to their customers and making sure we can arti articulate and provide the functionality they need, but also importantly, articulate it in the terms that they would in turn talk to their customers about. I see, I see. And how would you, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the, the journey of the product manager there. Like how would they, you know, learn about Chronify, discover it, um, and get started, how would a typical journey be looking like? Or maybe what are the channels that you, you know, learn to reach those um, types of roles the best? So we've invested really heavily in SEO and content uh, over the years, but also specific content in specific verticals. So uh, HR and specifically recruiting, uh, we're kind of hiring tech as we call it, anything from the point of, point of kind of sourcing the candidate all the way through them becoming and you know, getting the offer is what we consider hiring tech. And so we've 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 gone very deep on that problem in terms of the the different functionalities that are available and, uh, and the different capabilities of uh, of different software stacks, which gives us a clear set of software vendors that that we can target uh, our messaging to, and we've used a mix of you know there's kind of paid social advertising, there's content, there's kind of SEO, but it, interestingly, what's worked well for us is events. Back when we were allowed to see each other, uh, we would attend uh, HR events uh, as a as a vendor. But really, our our pitch was selling to all of the other exhibitors yeah. rather than necessarily the attendees. And what's great if you can pick the right event, then the product managers are actually at that event because they want to see what everyone else is doing. They want to talk to customers, and it, so it's a great way of having those starting those conversations. Very awesome. I think that's a great way for everybody who is sort of sitting in that layer um, of providing API driven products to any sort of industry just to be part of those events where all of those guys are presenting. Very, very smart. Um, I'm curious about the website. I'm actually here right now on chronify.com and everybody who's listening in, and especially if you're a product manager in a hiring tech related product, check it out. Um, I'm here on the website and um, I was curious, like 
what role does the website play in the journey of, for example, let's stick with a, man, um, a product manager, uh, learning about Quantify and, and getting started? Uh, it's absolutely the landing point. It's the, it's the point of arrival. Um, I guess the, the biggest traffic pages are the home page the pricing page uh, that's a that's a really inter- a really important part of our our entire proposition and the way chronify is run is everything above board is one of our core principles so unlike other vendors we'll publish our pricing and our pricing is very much geared around uh making sure that we're not inhibiting people from getting value from our product as well so we don't bill on api transactions we don't bill on uh the uh uh number of events created by our platform Mm -hmm. so the website really is is the primary shop window because a product like chronify i think is bought rather than sold we're not going to convince someone to say you know what you need to do next quarter you need to do scheduling yeah product managers know they have a a a long list of features and uh, the, uh, the requirement but what they need to know is they need to know if they start to make the decision and start down that evaluation process, they need all the information at their fingertips. So they've, you know, they've done 65, 70% of the research before they even speak to us. Mm-hmm. So that's why all of our documentation is online. Our documentation for customers of our customers is online and available. Our, uh, our security and privacy, all of the information they need around our white papers. It, depending on the types of customers that we're dealing with, they'll have, they'll have a, set, a set of requirements that they have to go through in order for us to make the short list of a vendor they can, they can actually do business with, let alone a short list of a vendor who could perhaps solve this problem. Mm-hmm. And so it's important that the website gives them that information. So when we're talking to them, we are talking to them about the specific problem they're looking to solve, and we can help them explore what they're trying to achieve, but importantly, it gives us time to you know, perhaps share best practice. You know, we kind of have a, a kind of, we do have a unique perspective on scheduling. No other company has built scheduling into as many applications as Chronify has. We've seen this across a range of industries. Now, our job uh, from a, a product perspective is to distill all of that down into a set of features and capabilities in our API that people can, can use. So really, the job of the website is to educate people sufficiently so we're having really a success conversation up front, not a sales conversation. Yeah, I would like to touch on that a little bit because you mentioned the success conversation there. Can you tell me a little bit how you're thinking about, you know, qualifying um, the leads that are coming through through the website, the people that are signing up? Is there is that something that is of a process that you've set up? Is that how how do you think about lead qualification so that you you know spend time with the people that would be getting most value? So there is an element of um, making sure people understand the kind of pricing level. And by publishing our pricing, that makes that conversation easy. Mm-hmm. So certainly, there's, there's, you get to our kind of $8,000 a year plan, you get into scheduling. That's where you get access to our scheduling capabilities. Mm-hmm. And at that level, we, we, we can justify having a conversation with you. Our kind of inside sales team or our success mm-hmm. team can, 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 can justify having a conversation. And often that's an entry point for far larger deals. But... That in itself, by having pricing on the page, it gives us a reason to, to sort of qualify in for a conversation or perhaps just say, here's the documentation, show your developers, kind of knock yourself out. Our support team are available if you need help. So that's really important, but also, I guess, understanding the use case that people are articulating as well. Um, and we could, we do a little bit of research beforehand. So we use a tool called Ricochet, uh, it's a, a Chrome plugin that just gives us access to a kind of a quick view on the company. So we can get a feel for their funding status, the likely size, the number of, we can quite quickly find out the number of product managers, how advanced the product team is. So it kind of prepares us for that conversation, but we are also relatively bold in talking to customers and just having those difficult conversations up front around pricing around the people that get involved. If we're going to have a demo call, we need to make sure that it's, you know, as an example, not necessarily just a UX person because they won't necessarily be able to make the kinds of decisions that need to be made or understand necessarily the implications of integrating a tool like Chronify. Mm -hmm. So we need to set up, yes, we're happy to have a demo, but can we make sure there's a tech lead on that call as well or make sure there's a product manager on the call as well. So, yes, so really it's about by being open, we can be more confident and, and just clear with people that 
this is how you get success from working with Quantify. Yeah, yeah. And, how, and how would that look like um, as a sort of a steps that you're going through? So I'm signing up on the website. Would I be called from your inside sales team or what would be the process? Uh, you book a demo, you, you receive an email and there's that that qualification process starts via our email mm -hmm. uh of, of course we 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 ha we'll, we'll have a scheduling link to allow you to book a call so that's our kind of new end user scheduling tool as well so this is a plug-in for gmail and hubspot that allows you to generate these personalized links mm -hmm. and i think that's the the other side for us as well is that you we have to showcase what we're doing in that situation this is the capability that you can embed within your application so Recruiters, for example, are leaving their application. Uh, the uh, the uh, they are offering these links as part of that flow. Gotcha. Very very interesting. Okay, I see. So maybe since we're talking about the website, one more question on that at the moment. Can you tell me how you're thinking about winning sort of more leads from the website? You know, how do you think about sort of conversion, right? Because there's always that, as you were describing that trade-off between you properly qualifying and you have the right conversation, then you get the maximum of people actually coming through how do you how do you think about that so i, I think it's make we, we we've always thought about this about providing the information to allow people to essentially self-qualify mm -hmm. and thinking about the buying journey that the customer is on and very much our pipeline is, is mapped around the buying journey rather than the selling journey mm -hmm. so there is a kind of I, I actually, I saw a talk by Bob Mester yesterday, uh, a business of software, who's talked about this uh, demand side selling. Um, he has a new book out. Uh, but this idea of kind of passive looking and active looking and understanding where people are in the process and allowing you to sort of qualify the kinds of conversations you, you should be having. Mm -hmm. Now, with where we are, we, we, uh, we try and get the website to make sure we're, we're talking to people at that, okay, I'm actively looking for something. Mm -hmm. We do try and encourage people to do uh, the proof of concept as early as possible, get the developers to look at it, just to dig it off. So part of the website is around, in many ways, we don't need lots of leads. What we need is quality, absolutely quality, not quantity. That, that's what we're focused on. Um, and the, we have sufficient traffic on our website that we can do some improvements around, say, the onboarding flow for developers and we will see a kind of increasing conversions there whether or not that would translate into uh these larger ticket sales i'm not sure is is is, is the real answer because the larger ticket sales are making more strategic decisions about their product and so therefore the process they may a developer may be looking into it but there will be product managers and, and product leaders involved and we have to be having conversations with them anyway. So either they st we start with them and then the developer comes in and gets a great experience from using our service or the developer does some research that's right. This is one of the, this is a great experience. We should talk to these guys. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So there's a couple of ways that they could go into the funnel and then having that conversation. Very, yeah. very interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. And, we, and we think about the funnel in terms of the three phases of evaluation and it, people can switch between those stages or do them all together. So we have a kind of product evaluation, a technical evaluation and a commercial evaluation as phases in our sales funnel. And whilst we have them as a funnel, generally it goes product then technical then commercial. Often they can, they can move around and switch around what we want to get to before we, before they get into that kind of purchasing stage of the pipeline is we know they've gone through all of those stages and the key people are identified and we understand who those people are and that they've made the decision. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned that the quality is really the key driver here and not necessarily the quantity of signups, what is something maybe that the team has been, you know, recently working on or improving in order to, you know, ensure that quality uh, of the signups that are coming through? So we've, uh, we've launched a privacy and security hub. So we've, we've recently been through the ISO 27001 process and SOC 2 process. Uh, and obviously we're HIPAA compliant, GDPR, CCPA, and yeah, the world is, is catching up with Europe in that regard. And absolutely what we were finding was um, there, were, there was some resistance or we could be being qualified out where, pe where people didn't see we had those... Those, mm -hmm. those, those qualifications and actually fundamental to quantify is that we've kind of lent into that as a problem right rather than trying to avoid it as a problem so investing in that 
that privacy and security hub has been really, really important. So there's a lot of work going in there mm -hmm. and actually kind of migrating our web technology from WordPress to, to Webflow to, to ensure that the compliance team have control over that area of, of the website. And so they can react and update and, and as they learn from talking to customers, we can refine the messaging at, at all times. Okay, so it sounds like really showing particular features that your particular capabilities that you are providing to highlighting them has been a key yeah. of the efforts. Very yeah. interesting. Okay, so let's switch switch gears um, a little bit here. Um, I would like to learn about you as an individual and the leader of the company a little bit. Um, so maybe could you um, tell me like what type of content do you consume? How do you learn um, and educate yourself further as a, as a leader in a company? <sighs> I kind of read the internet. Yeah, you kind of you, you distill these things from 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 Twitter and uh, and and friends. I I guess uh, I'm a, a big fan of April Dunford's work. The the the, um, the 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 positioning based on a point of view. I think that's critical to to the way Chronify approaches life. And I think we could do a better job of that. Um, the kind of jobs to be done framework is is also very useful i try to think what book what, what book i read recently uh so i've currently got uh oh well there you go i got punished by rewards on my desk that i'm i'm, I'm reading right now which is more of a kind of a a, a a management book and i'm just reading algorithms to live by as well mm -hmm. uh so again thinking about how how the work is done but for me i'll, I'll take from a, a a number of sources and one thing I've learned is, so I've had businesses before, I've grown teams before. You know, my, uh, my last company was kind of 80 people when I, or, when I exited. And as we think about the kind of the principles for growing Chronify this time, we've very much been very deliberate about the principles and how we craft those and engaging the team with that process. So it becomes a true reflection of the team and, and how they operate rather and, and and really empowering people to say kind of empowering people to say no i think is my where i'm reflecting on a lot of these things and yep. um so uh, yeah so i books materialize through various means blog posts um yeah I, I kind of read a lot i see very interesting so um if you don't mind we would be jumping into sort of you know since we're slowly coming to an end of the interview we would be jumping into the rapid fire questions usually you know it's okay one sentence question usually one word or one sentence answer so um are you ready for those as, as i'll ever be lucas <laughs> great so for your company what's the first thing coming to mind when i say the word marketing operations Success. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind when I say the word sales operations? Um, helping people to buy. Mm -hmm. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Scheduling everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be one thing that you wanted to have fixed for your company today? We want to be time lords, so time. Very, very good. <laughs> I like this answer. Very good. Um, what's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Um, a few sleepless nights, around about middle of March, but um, we uh, s sorted it all out. Mm -hmm. Very good. And the very last question, if today would be your first day working on uh, Chronify, what would be the one advice that you would give yourself? Oh, now that is a difficult one. That's why it's the last one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, stay deliberate. Deliberate decision making has been the foundation of our success. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get carried away and chase things, and like the, the new shiny, but a deliberate focus on our mission and making sure that we're constantly refining the articulation of that, that mission and that vision to the team, that's key. And you know, change, but change deliberately rather than as a flight of fancy. Sorry, that was a bit longer than a word. Sorry about that. That's, that's fine. I mean, that, that usually the last question is a little bit deeper. So I really yeah. appreciate, uh, Adam, that you took the time and uh, you know, walked us through the world of Chronify. Um, 
how you've been working in you know leading the company and how you guys have been evolving and looking at growth at the very moment so thanks for being part of platform presents thanks for the opportunity lucas <laughs>